Hi, welcome to another trade skills video. I'm Joe Carswell, and this lesson is going to cover a very handy tool we use a lot when we're building called a speed square. You might hear this called a rafter square, and this tool does a whole lot. It does some very basic things that you'll do straight away, even on our skills exercises. And this tool even does some advanced things that you would use for some advanced framing like compound angles, maybe even roof framing. So let's get right into it. We call this tool a square because that's what it does for us. It helps us square things. In building, 90 degrees means square. This edge here is 90 degrees to this edge. We like that when we're building. We're always looking for that condition. You can use this tool to check for square or 90 degrees. If I was curious whether this a surface was square or 90 degrees to, to this surface, I can use this tool as a reference push it up in that corner. And if I have full contact here and here, that means that this is a square condition. I would call that good building. Not all speed squares are made the same. This one, it has printed numbers on it. These could wear off over time, possibly. This one has stamped numbers on it, much more durable over time. This is cast. This one is a uh, CNC cut one. It's a little thicker. They're both aluminum. You might see this in plastic. Uh, they have uh, features that are similar, guide notches, and some of the printed numbers are a little different. Here you see on this edge, this one uh, carries a number 5, 15, 25, 35. It skips some numbers. This one has a number every 5 degrees. So they might be marked a little differently, but they should have a mark in the, in the same place from one speed square to another. Also, you have rulers on them. And up here, you have a ruler that's marked with numbers. On this one, the same ruler, but it doesn't have any numbers. Once you learn the speed square that you have, it'll make a lot more sense and you can use it in that really efficient way that we expect with this particular tool. So this is a triangle. It's not a square. So why do we call it a square? When we're talking about square and building, all we need are two sides that are 90 degrees from each other. That is uh, the, the, the reference that we need to make this tool work. The fence edge, which sits up against the material, that's our reference edge. We also have a ruler edge here that's marked like a typical tape measure. We also have our angle gauge here that's marked in degrees. We have zero to 90 degrees. We also have a guide notch here that sets up with a ruler edge to give us parallel lines that we can mark. We even have a secondary ruler up here that helps us make multiple uh, squared lines. We'll go through that as well. So it also has one other feature here. I mention it for our angle of finder feature, and that's our pivot point. That's this point right on the inside of this uh, 90 degrees here. We'll need to reference that when we cut angles. Now that we know the parts of our speed square, let's go through one of the most common things you'll do, and that will be marking a line that you will then cut with, say, a freehand saw. We want that line to be square to this long board edge, and this tool does a great job of that. First, let's go ahead and mark a point on this board to then mark it to length. I'll, I'll go ahead and pull a tape on here and mark a point at 10 inches. Now the pencil goes right there on my crow's foot point. We're going to place the speed square on the board tight. So this fence has to go tight to this edge of the board. We'll push that speed square up to the pencil, which is now at the point of our uh, crow's foot. Now we can mark that line. I'm going to mark it with a pencil at somewhat of an angle to get it in nice and tight to the edge. I'm going to mark right along this ruler edge. What you have now is a perpendicular line to the edge of this board that we can then use as a guideline to say run a saw and cut that line. Often in construction we need to make more than one mark. Let's say we wanted another one an inch and a half from this one. We can use this secondary ruler right in here and line this particular mark which is an inch and a half. They have an arrow right there for us. And we can line that up. Now we can mark a line here. And we have a parallel line that's an inch and a half from our first one. 
So let's do that process again in the other direction. Let's put an inch and a half mark on the other side of this original line we made. I'm gonna flip this speed square over. Remember, it's two-sided. We can use it in either direction. And I'll go ahead and line that arrow up right there on my original mark. And I can go ahead, draw that line. Now I have inch and a half between this line and this line. And then I have it again here. You're going to do this a lot in our skills exercises and actually in a lot of framing processes like plate layout. Let's look at another way to mark with this tool. I'm not going to mark perpendicular square this time. We're going to make a parallel line on this board. Say I wanted to rip this board in half. I'm going to use these guide notches here. These notches relate to this ruler edge. So you can follow, say, this line over and find the guide notch that sort of corresponds with it. If you need some of these marks, you have to go over to this set of notches. So it's either going to fall in this set of notches or these. Choose the one you need, and then you can put your pencil in that notch or your marking tool in that notch and then push it along and it'll make that mark. So this is a two by six. Say we wanted to rip it in half. Uh, a two by six is five and a half inches. So half of that would be two and three quarters. I'll look on my ruler edge here and find that two and three quarters mark is right there. And then I'll carry over and find the guide notch that, that sort of lines up with that two and three quarters. It happens to be this one right here. And as I put my pencil in, I can push this square along, keeping it tight to my edge, and it makes a parallel line to either edge right in the center of the board. So let's drag another line on this board that would be parallel to the edge. I'm going to do, say, an inch from this top edge. I'll find the inch mark on my ruler. I'll put my pencil into that slot or that guide notch. And now as I'm holding it tight to the material, I'll slide it along. And now I have a line that is an inch from this edge. Remember your zero starts up against this fence. So it's really important to keep that tight while you're doing this process. This is a great time to talk about some of these minor differences between these tools. I wanna to bring up my other uh, speed square here. On the blue tool, I've got guide notches on both sides of this cutout. So when you're using these guide notches, you're always pulling your pencil. So you have to flip this tool so that it's going to pull depending on which side guide notch you're using. On this tool, all the guide notches are on the same side. They're much smaller, so your pencil has to be much sharper, but this tool will always get pulled in this direction to make the mark. So, and they also line up with all of these marks. This tool carries a little further. I can go as far as three and a half inches with my guide notches. This one stops at about three inches. So that's a little bit of difference between two tools that are basically the same. Also, the ruler on this speed square is marked with numbers. You have an inch, you have two inches, you have three inches, and so on. And it starts with zero over here. Zero is not marked. Our first mark is at half an inch, and you kind of have to eyeball that to figure that out. Once you get to half an inch, they're marked every eighth of an inch as you go, and it has that special mark at an inch and a half. That's the thickness of a two by. That's for our convenience. That makes it speedy like a speed square. The difference between this one and this one is that this one has no numbers marked on this interior or secondary ruler. The, uh, the full inches are marked with a dot, and then in between, that would be one inch. Here's two inches, here's three inches. And in between those are half inches and then quarter inches. So it does not go down to eights on this particular ruler and there are no numbers. So you just have to learn that. If this is your tool, you'd learn it in the first day and you might even see this question on a quiz. So this tool can measure more than just 90 degrees. We've got that down pretty well. When we lay it on here, it squares up a board and we can count on that measurement 90 degrees from here to here. It also has another angle built into it. It's a 45 degree angle. So I can take this tool. This is my 45 right here. Those two sides make a 45 degree angle. I can use that just like I use my 90 as I push my fence tight up to this edge. This gives me a 45 degree angle 
right here. And this is my 45 degrees right here. So what we can do is go cut that. And I actually have a piece here cut. This part right here has been measured, marked, and cut to that 45 degrees. And we can hold our speed square up to it. And I can kind of show you what's going on here. As, as I hold this speed square up, you see what I measured, marked, cut away. This piece is gone, right? That was our 45 degrees. What is left is this angle right here. If you're wondering what that angle was, what you're going to do is take that original 90 degrees, subtract the 45 that we cut from it, and what you're left with, 90 minus 45, is 45 degrees. If we need to measure other angles, this tool will do it uh, as well, but it is a different process. So let's take a look at how that works with a speed square. Let's talk about the features of the angle finder. This edge here is the one that we're going to read. If you notice the numbers, they go from zero here, which is not marked. They go up to five, 10 is not marked, 15, 20, 25, 35, 45, all the way up to 90. So we have any choice in there in one degree increments. You can count the lines if you need to. We also have a pivot point. That's this inside point right inside of the, the fence here. And we want to rotate this speed square on that pivot point. It's really important that that point stays fixed. And as we rotate it, we will watch or read the edge of this board. Whatever number is lined up with the edge of this board is the angle that's being created right here. So as this rotates more, this number grows, this angle grows, and it will grow all the way up to here is 45. We can even go to 90. And as we get to 90, it ends up on the end of the board, right? So we have this range all the way from zero to 90 in one degree increments. So it's really important to understand that what's happening over here is related to this ruler edge and this angle either growing or shrinking. So given that information, let's go through a couple of examples. I'm going to call out uh, an angle and then we will actually perform it here. We're always starting in our squared or zero position and my fence is tight up against the board. I have my pivot point set on my edge here and I'm going to rotate it. Let's do say uh, 40 degrees. Okay, so I'm going to rotate the speed square on my pivot point and I'll rotate it till I line up this edge at 40 degrees. Let's do that again. There's my 40 degrees. So if I mark this here, I've created a 40 degree angle right here. Let's do 15 degrees. So I start from zero, squared up, set at zero, pivot point locked in, and I will rotate it to 15 degrees. I'm looking at the edge of this board, lining it up with that mark. Now, if I mark this line here, I've created a 15 degree angle right there. So let's get real world with this. We started with our 45 degree cut on our board. You remember this one? We, I measured uh, 45 degrees and we cut that off. This is what I'm left with. Say you wanted to have a 60 degree angle here. It's a little bit different. We're gonna use the angle guide. We'll do a little math. This is how that's gonna go. So we'll start with our zero or squared position like we do with any of our angles but we need to remove a certain amount to end up with 60 degrees. Remember, we're starting with 90, so we need to remove 30 degrees from 90 to end up with our 60. So the angle I'm trying to find is my 30 degrees. So we know how to do that. We set our pivot point, we rotate our square to our 30 degrees on our edge over here, and we can go ahead and mark that line. So what I have here now is I have a 30 degree angle here. What that will leave me is my 60 degrees because 90 minus that 30 leaves me with 60. I happen to have a piece that I cut at 60 degrees. Let's take a look at that one. So here is my 60 degree angle cut on this board. And remember, the way we got here was starting with our squared end, which was our 90 degrees, and we removed 30 degrees from that 90 
the 30 the 90 minus the 30 we end up with this angle here which is our 60 degrees so that's the process you always follow so this process works with any angles that you need you can take say 20 degrees and say you wanted to end up with a 20 degree angle on the end of this board so what you would do is you would take 90 degrees subtract 20 from it you'll end up with a 70 degree angle that's what we're going to measure mark and then remove from this board to leave us with our 20 degrees so i will set up my pivot point on the edge here and i'll rotate this speed square this is a super heavy angle so we're going to go all the way to 70 degrees which is there and that right there leaves me and we would extend this line out with a straight edge but what that leaves me with once i cut this material out uh, it leaves me with a 20 degree angle here and remember the way we get to this 20 is to remove all of this which is our 70 degrees here's a great technique to make a perfectly straight cut with a freehand saw say a circular saw first thing take the blade and line it up with the mark you've made now you're going to pull your speed square into the base plate of the circular saw keeping that tight now we're going to hold on to this speed square we're not going to let go we're going to start the saw and push on through keeping full contact with that speed square all the way through the cut so with only these two tools and this saw guide technique we can cut perfectly square cuts in lumber over and over and over again and using this larger speed square this 12 inch version we can cut even wider boards up to a 2 by 10 and a 2 by 12 and we can do this with results that are almost as good as a miter saw so there you have it some good information on a tool that everyone should have in their bag we learned how to use this tool to mark lines to measure short measurements to make all kind of angle measurements and when you're framing when you're building you'll use a tool like this all day every day and that brings me to a point to talk about that this like your level like your tape measure these are precision measuring instruments they need to be taken care of this should be in your bag in a place not laying in the dirt stepped on on the ground if it's not square anymore or if you can't read the marks on it anymore it's no good to you as a measuring tool so i hope that makes sense i hope you like this tool as much as i do get this in your hands start using it you're going to love it so thanks for watching i'll see you in the next lesson